Welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Oswin and Lord Knight. Shit on a shingle. <laughs> that's that's the name of this episode. Shit on a shingle. Shit on a shingle. <laughs> the shingle being your mind, and the shit being your thoughts. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right. I wasn't hated before. <laughs> I know, right? What I want to do is I want to delve into your thought processes. Okay. So, like, when you're thinking about something. Right. What is it you do? Okay. Well, like, w- when I'm sitting there, like, looking at something like a, a concept, like cashless bail. Okay. Why, it does make sense to me when we're talking about this, that you're innocent until you're proven guilty. And if you get arrested, technically you're innocent. So how in the hell can I put you in jail and force you to pay to get out? All right. But yet I've seen in the news over and over again, where the States and places that have done this, it's gone completely downhill. Okay. So you, you start with the initial concept, so, right? And then start to work your way out. Okay, well, fine. If we're not going to arrest you, if Bob, because we like picking on Bob, (laughs) Bob goes out and kills Ted, right? I mean, that's murder. Then it starts to become, you know, if he's murdered one person, what's to stop him to going out and killing another? If he's been arrested for Ted's, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but you've got cashless bail, so that means they're not... Bob's the, not going to go to prison. He's no, not going to go to jail. No, but so if he goes out and kills somebody else, where's the problem? When I'm sitting there doing that, well, if this is the problem, if this is the result of doing this, then we have to back up. But if we are doing bail and it's not happening, what's the difference? Do you see what I'm saying? I think so. In other words, I don't know how to get the innocent people that really just need a slap on the wrist out of this system. So they can go to work tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah. that, 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 that because Sally decided to have one extra glass of wine at dinner with her friends and stuff like that. She's technically over the legal limit gets pulled over. Right. And she's only slightly above, but still it's illegal. She gets arrested. I don't think this lady's going to go out and commit another crime. But yet you got Bob here who's killed somebody, but he, he might go out. You know, he's already done it once. What's to stop him doing it again? Right. These are the processes I sort of go through with. Because you got to look at the bad side. What happens if it all goes sideways? So you start with the initial concept and then you branch out from there to, okay, well, if we get to X point, then we have to back up. Right. Because then we have to retrofit all of that information. Right. I mean, again, I, but still, then, I still don't have a problem with cash to spell, but should we do the five? I mean, and did, again, these are just questions. Should we maybe do, if you do do something like, you know, what's her name? Who gets a little over the legal drinking and gets caught? Right. Do we slap a ankle monitor on these people? And as soon as a crime comes, you know, is committed, anybody within a certain mile automatically gets picked up if they got a bracelet on. Okay. You know, because your trust into following the rules and stuff have dropped, so we got to keep a little bit better eye on you. Right. And I mean, instantaneously, I don't care if the store just got robbed two seconds ago and you've got your ankle bracelet, you know, one second before. Right. So now you're just branching out into other options, right? Other possibilities, other possibilities. What to, those repercussions would mean? Because again, what we've seen in the news is doing cashless bail is causing the problem to get worse, not better. Right. Do you, do you see what I'm saying there? So now we need to start doing other options. But in exploring those options, you still have to look at. What's going to happen if you take this option? Right. What's that going to mean for the good person? What's that going to mean for the bad, well, for the innocent versus the guilty? Well, and, and if we do this, that where there's a crime, a store gets robbed, and we bring in everybody that has in a ankle bracelet and a five mile radius, you're going to sweep up at like you know 
probably the majority of 99% of them aren't going to be innocent people anyway. You're interrupting their lives and stuff again. Right. But, you know, I hate to be this way. Is that not part of the punishment? You broke the rules. Because you broke the rules, we get to interrupt your life until you have your day in court. Okay. But then, then I also have to ask this, is the whole bail thing, the fact is, is that we no longer have speedy trials anymore. No. It's not like you get arrested and then immediately go to, you know, straight to, you know, court and do all this. You might have to sit in a prison for days on end. I don't think that's right either. Again, these are not simple answers to a lot of these questions. Right. But I don't think you can be married or sit there and go, no, it has to be this way without asking questions. Right. You have to think, okay, what happens if it all horribly goes wrong tomorrow? Right. You know, what happens if we let 50 psychopaths out and they all start going on mass killing spree because of this law? What do we do? Right. So you have to, you have to look at the extremes. You as well to. as the quote unquote normal realm of possibilities. You have to go outside of that. Right. To, to create a balance point somewhere that makes sense. Somewhere where we're locking up the people that are going to meet the most harm to the mm -hmm. public. While at the same time protecting, you know, the innocent too. Right. And ever and again, equal application of the law. Right. All right. Just because you're a politician, I don't think you should get off scot free. Oh, absolutely not. Just because you know, you're wealthy doesn't mean you get you off scot free. Scot free. I, I I don't like that. I don't like these people who are able to play to win. Right. In the court system. Right. It does need to be more fair. There does need to be changes there. I just don't think going to these extremes is a necessarily a good thing. Gotcha. I believe that children. In the school system, from day one, even if they're being homeschooled, mm -hmm. has to take some hand-to-hand -hand combat classes. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I completely agree with that. So many hours each year, all the way up to graduation. Because I think knowing how to fight will actually prevent a lot of bullying. Because well, bullying starts off in that that kid that gets that's in first grade gets held back a year and he's slightly bigger than all the other kids he can use intimidation in his weight and all that to get the other kids afraid of right and as someone who was who was bullied i can tell you if i'd had some type of you know self defense class or hand to hand combat or something well i mean don't get me wrong i'm not sitting there and saying and this person knew about it then they would have been less likely to pick on me. Well, I, I think the problem that this logic goes along the lines of if everybody knows how to fight, that means you also know how to take a punch. Right. But that that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, It, it makes it completely. Okay. I'm just saying, even if I had had right. some type of training, right? Not that I would be out to use it, but just the fact that he knows that you know how to do this that right there is going to lessen or eliminate the chance that he's going to bully me. Right. Because again, you're, you're taking off the option that this kid that might be a year older than you, you're now taking that size or that advantage they got off the table because you both know how to fight. Absolutely. And so I, you learn to fight, not to fight. Right. And I'm just like you, if we've got every kid in school who knows how to do it, then everybody knows everybody else can kick your ass. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and it suddenly becomes a different scenario. It, I think it would. Yeah. I mean, that's like the second amendment. I believe 100% in the second amendment and I believe in it because of the witch history. Right. When, you know, when Rome sent out the people to minister to mm -hmm. the Kings and Queens in the British Isles. Right. At one point they finally convinced them to make it illegal for women to own weaponry. Right. And because of the way Celtic society was, women owned most of the land and the businesses and all this other stuff. So they had the majority of the wealth. Right. But if they're not allowed to hold weapons, they can't defend themselves. So it was a whole lot easier to arrest them and burn them as witches. Right. Because they didn't have weapons because it was made illegal. And I'm sorry, if the pagan community does not support the Second Amendment, y'all ain't pagan. Well, let's just lay it out there. I, I, I just, I, just on that history of ours, 
Right. Should be enough to make all pagans go, no, you will take my guns from my cold dead hands. Right. And I will be taking some of you with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can talk about it once we get to the Summerlands. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got an issue with it? We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. But for right now, this is, I don't see a problem with this. Do you? I don't. And, and you know, I've, I've never been a big gun person, but I've never been one to say we shouldn't have the right to bear arms. Or we shouldn't have, we should have the right to at least defend ourselves. Right. You know, I, I believe in that 100%. I, I do too. You know, when you live out in the country and, you know, police take more than a minute or longer to get there, <laughs> your worldview changes really fast. Sure it does, yeah. It's not like living in New York where you might have a cop two seconds away. Right. You know, we, we ain't got that kind of... <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, could, it could take them, you know, 10, 15 minutes to get out here. And in that time... I mean, our neighbor, our, if you put our two neighbors' front yards together, you got at least a football field there. Right. Easily. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's the kind of area we live in. You know, I mean, these are the inner workings of my mind. These are the things I think about. You know, I mean, like the whole trans thing. All right. I don't have a problem with calling you your pronouns or whatever to your face in the whole nine yards. I don't have a problem with being respectful to these people. I understand they're going through something. But with that said, they also have to realize at the end of the day, when I'm home, when I'm alone with my thoughts, you're still what you were born. Yeah, see, I can't, I, I can't get on board with that. I'm it's, even to your face. It's, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I, I consider, I consider it being a polite, saying yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, whatever. I just being polite. But it doesn't mean at the end of the day, you actually have what's in my heart and my mind. I don't actually believe it. You know, I mean, that's like sitting there saying, you know, hey, as a gay man, you got to like trans men. N no, I don't. I can be me. And you can be you. Right. You know, I, I, I know what I like about guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at the end of the day, no, I don't believe it. I don't see it. I don't subscribe to it i won't yes if i'm talking to you yeah i want to treat you with respect and all that yeah hey you want me to call you tim or whatever okay whatever no skin off my nose doesn't actually mean i believe it right and i think there's a lot of people out there that do this that that go around they say it in the whole nine yards yeah you you live your life whatever you know and, and i'm sorry if you're an adult and you want to you know make yourself look like the opposite sex go for it if you're a kid, no. Uh, you you need to wait until you're an adult. Because trust me, I've I, I was a kid. I've made some bad decisions. <laughs> Hell, I I've made I've made bad decisions as an adult. <laughs> I think we all have. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> yep. What was that I used to tell my dad? At thirteen, I knew it all. Senility set in sometime after. There you go. <laughs> That's about right. Anything else you'd like to know about? I think that's it. All right. Ready for the next topic? Sure. How to keep yourself out of trouble. <laughs> Not presenting a bad image for craft. Yes. <laughs> I remember when I was getting classes from Lord Men on counseling. Mm -hmm. He kept on giving me these scenarios. Okay. These were no win scenarios. Oh, those are always fun. Because no matter what in the world you did, a lot of these were like the, the Hitler baby thing. Okay. You can travel, if you could travel back in time and kill Hitler as a baby, would you? Yes or no? Would you? No. Uh, you, you would not cop that tyrant from killing all them thousands and hundreds of people. What kind of monster would do something like that? Right. I mean, I can present a valid argument for my, for my stance on that, uh, but, but I could but, also say, yes, I would. Uh, but as soon as you say, yes, you would, you would go back and kill a little innocent baby that has not done anything. <laughs> right. This is that catch 22. <laughs> right. There are situations where we're counseling people and no matter what in the world we do, 
we're going to wind up being the bad people. And we have to recognize that. So how do we handle that? I mean, how do we... Well, in what instances are we talking about? You know, I mean, are, are we talking about that person that whose friend needs to come see you? A friend of a friend who shows up at your house with the tin full hat, the whole nine yards going on, completely bonkers. And as soon as you speak up and go, hey, y'all might want to do a well visit. Oh, don't be talking about my family that way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then suddenly you're embroiled in this whole entire family matter because you're like, no, this person needs psychological help. Right. I mean, these situations. Well, I mean, in a, in a situation like that, couldn't you just look at them and say, you know what? This goes beyond my field of expertise. I don't know that I can help. Well, the, the scenario that was given to me, which was funny, was a guy needed to see a high priestess. Mm hmm. And was going on and on and on about this. So he, that somebody he knew finally got him in touch with somebody that Lord Men knew. They go to this person's house. They show up. They literally have a baseball cap on that has Tim full on the inside of it, carrying around this little box with a blinking red light on there. Oh, Lord. He begins to explain to the high priestess that he has turned Castro or somebody into a Galapagos Island turtle Unfortunately, he's the only one that could recall back the submarines that are shooting mind altering beams into the United States. Okay. Her only response was, I'm sorry if it was an eye of nude or something like that, I could help you. I know nothing about Galapagos Island turtles. <laughs> because she knew as soon as she inserted herself into that, everybody would be coming after her. What do you right. mean he's crazy? He ain't crazy. Who were you? Right. And then you would be getting in trouble for that. There's a lot of times where people in temple, married couples in temple, will get into fights or when well, we're there. Mm -hmm. How fast do we unexert ourselves and shut our mouths? <laughs> oh, very, very fast. Why? Because it's, it's not my place. Uh, yeah, because as soon as you say something, you're taking such and such side. <laughs> mm, how dare you take sides? How dare you take sides? Well, let me ask you this. In the 30 some odd years that you've run this coven, have you had any instances where you found yourself in a situation like that and you almost didn't have a way out? Where you had to really, I mean, really come up with something to get out of it? Unfortunately, Lord Men's training was enough. <laughs> I mean, there were some instances where I saw what coming down and I'm like, I think y'all would do better if y'all were to receive couple counseling from an actual counselor instead of me. And they didn't take that the wrong way? Well, I, I have no, and especially if they'd come down in this first thing and me going, you know, I think this goes beyond my field of expertise. So that is something acceptable to say. Well, I mean, it's something we teach. We teach this very much. Know your field of expertise. Right. All right. My field of expertise is not counseling. My field of expertise that was picked was uh, ritual and magical theory. And that was it. <laughs> right. That works. <laughs> it works. I mean, you know, that's it. I'm the guy in that temple that reads all these weird books and stuff like that and tries to formulate how in the world this works. I think I've done that for a number of years. Now. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. And how many years have I driven you up the wall doing that? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel sorry for you too. Oh, no, no, no. I love this idea. Da, da, da. But wait a minute. I got the problem. What about this? And what about that? What about this? And then if I did that, ah, crap. Now the idea is just falling apart. Right. Never mind. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you've seen yourself or you've gotten yourself trapped? Well, never where I got myself trapped, but where I could, I could see it coming. Like you said. Right. And it honestly, it was not even pagan related. No. It was, it was at work. But as soon as you hear these stories enough and stuff like that, you start noticing the behaviors. And you're kind of like, ah, yes. you know what? 
it looks like a good time for me to take my marbles and go home. <laughs> yep. Yep. Actually, I do that all the time um, where I am now. <laughs> they get into arguments and I just, I turn my back and put on my music and just la, 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 la. Wait for somebody to say something so you can go, huh? <laughs> and I do. <laughs> I'll hear somebody say my name and I'll turn around and I'll be like, huh? Huh? What? What? <laughs> y'all were talking? Oh, wait a minute. Y'all were other people are in this department? And they will they will honestly look at me and be like, you weren't even listening, were you? And I'm like, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm not getting in the middle of your mess. Look, look, look. I, I, I can't say anything. It in fascinates me to sit there and watch people sit there and type on their phones mm -hmm. because and especially the younger generation right it just amazes me how fast they move across that little God, screen. I know. and i know people are sitting there like well you're reading my text dude i i i can't read subtext i mean the, <laughs> on the screen right <laughs> i can't run i can't watch sub the um, right subtitles <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think i can read anything on your <laughs> right besides you've had it sent before i could even read it <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it just it fascinates me i don't know what in the world this has to do with removing yourself from i don't either but i, I have seen where i've sat there and been doing that and been kind of like uh, am i about to accidentally insert myself because I'm more fascinated with somebody sitting there typing, right. thinking I've read their text. Right. Yeah, I think over the years, I've, I've learned how to remove myself from it. Now, when when I was younger, just like you, I, I'm sure I inserted myself there all the time. When it, oh, yeah, it, it, I had, I, yeah, I had definitely some times when I wished I hadn't said anything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong if, you know, you, you see a kid going around with bruises on them. Every, so you, you might want to speak up. Right, that's different. That's a little different. You know, if you happen to see a woman going around every couple of days, being kind of quiet, got bruises on her, you, you might want to say something. Right. But, you know, inserting yourself into people's problems or um, debates or um, arguments. Right. Is, I've never seen where it works out well for anyone. No, if anything, it just makes it worse. You know, I mean, I understand when people do this, they really do it from a place of love and caring. And it just, it goes wrong. Because these people aren't in the right mind frame to accept criticism. Right. Just because they're your friends and all that does not always make them right. Well, and you also have to remember that sometimes what you say doesn't come out how you intended it. No. And that could but, make I mean, all the difference in a situation like that. I mean, you could have all the intentions of, you know, saying something calming or soothing and it just blow the fuck up in your face. I mean, what? Well, let's admit it. I'm a pretty blunt person. You? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, I, I'm pretty blunt. And, and, I, and I know that sometimes causes problems for other people because I'm just more like, Get the fuck over it already. What the hell? Right. I mean, I've learned to live with it, but I, <laughs> not everybody, not everybody can. <laughs> not everybody can. But, you know, I mean, because my thought always in my head is why waste all that extra time on stuff that don't make no sense? Right. Like, like I used to have a lady at work and she was like the secretary of the department and she would call me up and she would sit there going, oh, I need you to do this. And go on to this whole long tale of how this person's grandmother was Grandma Moses and came over on the Mayflower. And I don't care. At no point did I could ever get this woman to understand. You calling me and telling me to do something is enough of a reason to handle it with the utmost speed and care. Right. I don't, I don't need to know back history. I don't need to know details of this and that. that no. I mean, Just I, I tell me what you need done and I'll do it. I mean, I've worked there. I've worked there long enough. I understood the chain of command. And when this lady called me, it was how high on the way you're jumping. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And, and I mean, I had conversations with her many times about the, you calling me enough, telling me to go to clean a room or to do something was enough. 
And she would still do it every time. Of course she would. But hey, you know what? That's the way you want to communicate. That's great. But I mean, I, on the other hand, I don't expect you to not, if especially if I've told you, why in the world I'm getting annoyed. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> I might have been in the middle of something, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> that I need to finish up, and I, I could have gotten faster if you would have just got to the point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm justifying me being blunt. <laughs> In some ways, yeah. You know. That's pretty much what it sounds like. But no, I mean, me being blunt and doing counseling isn't always the best combination. No, it's not. So, so I have a tendency to not to try not to insert myself. Well, and you know, people, I find myself in situations a lot because I don't know. People just, they feel like they can talk to me. I mean, I get people who and, feel like they can talk to me. It's just the majority of the times they don't like the answer by the time we get to the end. Well, see, that's just it. Most of the time, I don't want these people talking to me. I don't want to know your problems. I, I, but, like, there's there's a lady at work, and she got passed up for a position. Oh, God. And now she's having to train the lady who got it. She is not happy. And she comes in and, well, I came in the other day and she's just bitching and bitching and bitching. And I'm like, I'm going back to Facebook <laughs> and I'm just scrolling through my phone and she just keeps going and keeps going. And I'm like, I, honey, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Uh, the only time Twitter's really good, that way you can just keep on strolling and strolling right? and strolling. <laughs> but it's like, I don't, I mean, the only thing that I turn around and tell her is that it takes a special person to train. Somebody who took the job they were looking for. Yeah. That's the only thing I could say to her. Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't know what else you want me to say. I'm not going to say anything else regarding this. I'm not going to say it's unfair. I, I mean, the only thing I could tell, the only thing I would tell her, <laughs> look, if you don't like it, quit. You know. Walk out the door. Right there's the door. Go find another job. I just, but that's the kind of situations I run into. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I, what makes you think that I really care about your situation. I'm here to work. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to help you make judgments on fucking whatever. Well, see, I think that's what aggravates me is I, I see people do that and they act like they don't have a choice. Yeah. That's the part that grinds my gear and makes me want to be like, then quit. Go find another job and quit. Well, and in all honesty, like this lady, she could have said, no, I'm not going to train her. Exactly. I don't have to train her. Right. You have other people who can train her. She could have easily said that and yes. be done with it. But no, she agreed to it. And I'm like, well, honey, you just, you walked into that. Uh, you're bitching about it. I mean, yeah, but you know, again. But I can't, I can't say that. Because as soon as you do, you become the bad person. Right. And I've inserted myself into a situation that I did not need to be in. <laughs> You know, I mean, because that's the bad thing about this. I mean, just because you have a view upon this. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean that your view is right. Mm-hmm. You know. That's when you have to learn. Keep your view to yourself. It's that whole thing about opinions <laughs> and holes. Yep. <laughs> Everybody's got one and some of them stink. Well, most and of them stink. All of them stink. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know unless that thing's freshly rinsed out <laughs> i know did you have it bleached <laughs> okay i'm out of coffee i'm done thanks for listening join us next week for another episode peg and coffee talk is brought to you by life temple and seminary Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, a maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. 
And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks.